So many of you have almost certainly already heard, but Microsoft Edge are retiring their web engine and using Chromium's web engine. Um, I've got an article up here by The Register, which I will, of course, link to down in the description below, but it's titled, It's Official, Microsoft Pushes Google Over the Edge. Oh, True, true register pun there. Um, shifts browser to Chromium Engine. So RIP, the edge is dead, as in the edge HTML layout code. And they're going to be, of course, moving across to the Chromium Engine. Microsoft on Thursday said it intends to use open source Chromium Browser Engine in the desktop version of its Edge browser, promising the 2% of global internet users who favor Edge an improved web experience. So... It's no secret that Edge and Internet Explorer, which is, I guess, its predecessor, has not been doing so well lately. It hasn't really been doing so well since since Firefox's, uh, uh, you know, glory days. So, um, I thought I would, uh, my opinion that I'm going to express today would be uh, one in, in reasonable isolation. But actually, having looked at um, many of, of you chaps on, on Mastodon and, and chatted with you guys about it, it seems that many of us are actually of a reasonably like mind that this is actually not a good thing, that this is Google sinking its claws ever deeper into the World Wide Web. And and this is, like, it's a real problem, and it's kind of a shame. I never thought that I would feel, uh, like, sadness. I, I guess it's sadness that Microsoft are actually giving up this fight. That that um, that Microsoft are, are are moving aside. You know, for all the gripes and criticism that I've levelled at Microsoft over the years, maybe not so much in recent years because I use so few Microsoft products, but I never thought that I would really lament to see uh, anything of Microsoft be pushed out of the market like this, and it really has put quite a few things in perspective for me in a much more broader capacity as well. This is in many ways a symbolic defeat for Microsoft and a symbolic victory for Google that it's just dominating more territory at this stage. Now, it's no doubt that from a a user standpoint that the Chromium engine is actually pretty good, it's pretty functional, uh, it's always done everything that I wanted it to do, but I've got to say that Firefox is quantum. Firefox Quantum now is, is, um, is really quite good, and I use Firefox almost exclusively. Um... But in the in the wider scheme of things, it kind of got me thinking even about Microsoft Windows and how it's not even doing particularly well there. It is, of course, no longer the primary operating system for browsing the internet. Android is that. So from that particular angle, you can say that, well, on one hand, Linux one, because it's the Linux kernel that is the uh, underlying technology behind Android, but or the underlying kernel more specifically. But then that is another victory for Google. Android is a Google operating system, and that is a problem. Now, uh, from the statistics that I've seen lately, there is no uh, operating system that has more than a 50% market share, and I actually think that this is arguably a healthier place than it was when Microsoft was, uh, you know, had 90% of the market share. So, I don't necessarily think that that we need to be all doom and gloom about it. I just think that we that this all nuanced that there isn't you know that that it isn't blanket good or blanket bad. That there is various different shades of 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 ways that we can look at this and and various different angles which we're going to be affected by this. So. Um, as with almost most opinions that I express here, it does come with a with a big old asterisk that well you know, nothing is defined, nothing is ongoing, things could change at any moment. And, um, and I'm, I'm always, you know, I, I always reserve the right to change my mind and to be wrong about a lot of things. But um, do I want to see the Linux desktop? When I say the Linux desktop, I don't mean Chrome OS, I don't mean Android on the desktop or anything like that. I mean, you know, Ubuntu, Fedora, Manjaro, Arch-based distributions, Debian-based uh, distributions, Red Hat-based distributions, you know, desktop Linux in that capacity, or GNU slash Linux, of course, to use its proper title. You know, what would be, you know, a victory for us in that regard? Google's idea of victory is sheer domination. 
And we can see that that is not a good thing on so many levels. Even so many websites, for example, Twitch, for example, uh, Itch.io, are, are two primary examples I've got at the forefront of my mind, which often set themselves aside as alternatives to other much larger monopolies, still use the Google Capture to make sure that their sites aren't necessarily subject to DDoS attacks, which is basically effectively running Google code on their website. The number of websites that I see using Google fonts and actually pulling down fonts from Google servers so that you can use them on a website so that you get some kind of aesthetic that no one's really going to notice at the end of the day. But Google know. Google will clock that data. Google almost certainly clock every single bit of data that they, you know, the, the reason why Google provide fonts for, of us, uh, for, for all of us so that we can just download them off their website and use is almost certainly because we can, they can then, uh, it expands their data collection um, ability. So that sites that aren't necessarily running Google Analytics but are using Google fonts, using you know stored on Google servers, can they also you know it, it gives them a connection into a website they wouldn't otherwise have. Not to mention, of course, that it adds increased overheads, not only with bandwidth and RAM and even processing. So when you've got websites like Itchio and uh, and Twitch, which you know Twitch being an alternative to YouTube, Itchio being an alternative to Valve, still using Google, you know, it's allowing, it's giving Google an in in so many places where they predominantly wouldn't. And specifically to speak to Itchio, although it isn't an alternative to a Google service, um, it does try and sell itself as a an indie marketplace, and that I think in and of itself, I you know, ideologically speaking, is a step away from Google. So I I just um, I'm disappointed to see Google Capture being used in so many different. Um, on so many different sites that aim to step away from, you know, monolithic services and siloed services like that, or or at least, you know, aim to to speak at a different angle or speak to a different perspective uh, than the uh, conventional wisdom of a monopoly. So, so what would a victory for GNU slash Linux on the desktop really look like for us? Because at the moment, we, uh, depending on various statistics, we run anywhere from 1% to 4%. And um, and that depends sort of what space we occupy. So we're certainly not a, um, you know, we're not a major player in, in the battlefield right about now. But uh, that, of course, could change at any moment. And obviously, I'm not really counting Android in all of that. And I'm not really counting Chrome OS, although from statistics that I've seen, Linux has a higher market share than Chrome OS at this stage, which is quite strange because you do hear about it quite a lot. In um, particularly from American media, so it does seem that Google are pushing a lot of their their services and their Chrome OS products in in America first. So, and then they're probably going to be expanding out to their markets on a more international level, which is a typical um, uh, business practice um, methodology for Google. So, would having a ninety plus percent market share for the GNU slash Linux be a bad thing. Well, yes and no. For example, you could say yes because it is um, effectively, even if it's something that we agree with, it's still a force in the marketplace that goes unchallenged. It's a monopoly, and monopolies, by definition, whether or not they benefit us, are not necessarily the healthiest thing for uh, you know any kind of of marketplace of, of this type. It always helps to have alternatives, choice, competition. And as much as, for example, Valve being a, a, a good example, a, a company that has done so much good for, for gaming on the, uh, on the Linux desktop, it still concerns many of us the um, sheer amount of, uh, of, of monopoly that they have. Uh, the, the sheer amount of market share that they have, rather. Uh, and it's not necessarily an overwhelming monopoly, but I feel quite comfortable, if I were to be a Windows user, that I could quite happily um, satisfy my gaming needs using only the Valve platform from a sheerly, uh, sheer, uh, from a sheerly pragmatic point of view. And there are also lots of different Linux distributions. A lot of people say that this is a problem with Linux. But, for example, the differences between Ubuntu, Fedora, even... Um, Debian, Arch, Gentoo, Slack, all of these di various different distributions, Solus there, of course, they do give an alternative. If Ubuntu were to get purchased by Microsoft, well, then, uh, you know, there are alternatives. We can move over to Fedora. If Fedora gets, well, Fedora did get purchased by IBM. <laughs> but if that is something that you don't necessarily like, or, well, Red Hat got purchased by IBM and I suppose by definition that might affect Fedora, but only time will tell on that one. Anyway, basically, if um, if for example 
uh, something happens to a distribution that you're not uh, you're not comfortable with, you can move to a different ship without having to necessarily uh, learn a whole bunch of different new uh, you know methods for doing things. There are obviously going to be some adjustments that you're going to need to make, but for the most part, switching from one Linux distribution to another is something that's reasonably feasible uh, and significantly easier than, say, switching from Windows to Linux or from Mac OS to Linux or even from Windows to Mac. So, um, I would say that there are uh, there is diversity within the Linux world of operating systems, but even that um, wisdom should be challenged. I mean, no, you know, nothing should really go unchallenged. All power should be questioned, and market share, I guess, is, you know, is a form of power in this particular equation. So. I think there's a place for Windows. I think there's a place for Mac. I think there's a place for Linux. And I think maybe in an ideal world, you'd have a, I don't know, equal market share, perhaps. There are things that Mac OS offer that Linux can't at the moment. A lot of accessibility. I work with a lot of, and again, I, I, I don't want to necessarily be too uh, prejudiced or generalized when I say this, but I work with a lot of older folks who grew up not using the complex technology that we take for granted today. They just want something that they can uh, then use to participate in broader discussions all over the world, keep up with the grandkids and, uh, you know, book holidays and all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, and, and many of them have accessibility requirements that can't necessarily be satisfied on Linux and in many cases, of course, on Windows. So, you know, Mac OS, I'm told, is actually quite good for a lot of accessibility reasons. Um, and it, it actually has been you know, known for quite some time that Linux perhaps is lacking in the Department of Accessibility. Uh, I'm, not the, you know, I'm not one to speak on that with any kind of authority. I'm just sort of relaying things that other people have, have told me over time. So... To say that Linux is the best and that everyone should use it, I don't necessarily think is is um, an unquestionable truth. It's the best for me because it allows me to customize the system I want. It give, allows me the choice I want. And it's built the way that I like. Like, it's not necessarily what Linux is, but how Linux has become what it is. The story behind it, the method behind it, the fact that it is a, uh, you know, a cum cumulative effort of must have been, must be millions of people at this stage. Like it to me is a, a fantastic achievement of mankind. But I don't expect everyone to see Linux through that same lens. And um, when I say Linux, I mean GNU slash Linux. So it's complicated. And I'm sure many of you guys might agree with me. I'm sure many of you guys disagree with me. And, and that's important to do so. And that's that's good. Um, diversity of, of opinion is, is not only a good thing, it's essential for a healthy ecosystem of ideas. Um, and that especially applies in the tech field where, you know, when we are looking for for particular things that suit us best and, and the best way of accomplishing things, well, if we do have one way which we assume is the best, that way should always be questioned and tested. A uh, key word there is tested. So this is certainly something of a rambly video, but it did get me thinking how lamentable it is when monopolies occur. And it does seem that in a lot of cases, centralization is a, a natural gravitational force in many different environments that might be a battle that we're constantly fighting, the first battle and the last in certain uh, capacities. So, so I thought I might just put out this video today, share some of my thoughts on it, but all things considered, I never thought I would mourn a Microsoft technology. But here we are. Strange times, strange times indeed. But uh, but many uh, of you guys uh, who I chat with over on Mastodon have um, expressed a similar kind of um, you know a similar kind of sorrow for this uh, end of an era. I guess I think many of us perhaps lament the direction that Microsoft has taken here less and lament. Google's increased dominance a little bit more. They have accrued 2% market share overnight here, it seems. Um, because it's not necessarily, in this case, about the spying and the surveillance that Google do, although admittedly those are very significant problems. But it's also that it allows Google now to set web standards completely unchecked. And that is deeply dangerous. Deeply dangerous. So all I can say is, let's have hope for, for Firefox and Mozilla and any other engine that we can find here. I'll certainly be doing my research and be looking at what browsers I can make use of that don't use the Chromium engine here. So thank you very much for watching. These are just a few of my rambly thoughts. It's been a while since I did a proper rambly video, completely unscripted, but I just found myself um, 
just sort of thinking about it quite a lot. And um, and I think there's a place for Microsoft. I think there's a place for Windows. I think there's a place for the Edge browser. <laughs> as uh, as odd as it might hear, as odd as it might sound to hear me say that. But uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Uh, certainly would be interested to hear them. And uh, yeah, that's about it for me today. And just before I head off, uh, I will be doing a, a sort of a year in review video before the end of the year, of course. But um, just as a bit of a heads up, I will be doing significantly more streaming in the new year. That will predominantly be over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Chris Ware. But if you are no fan of Twitch, if you are of no fan of Amazon and would prefer to use Google, I do mirror my live streams over on youtube.com forward slash gaming with werewolves. I will put a link to that down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.